Hey guys, today we are going to be learning about DNA and how to extract it by doing some coloring and some graphic notes. To begin, you should get the handout and colored pencils, maybe five or six, seven different colored pencils, and at least one pen. I like to use a couple different colors of pens. I'm going to start with the top part where it says DNA. I would color in the DNA lettering. And I call this unit hip hip hooray for DNA, so you could add that if you want. You should also write what DNA stands for. The D stands for deoxyribo, the N for nucleic, and the A for acid. And make sure you know how to say that, deoxyribonucleic acid. Next, you'll want to add your name to the paper. Now we're going to jump down to the first image. So that's an image of a strawberry. Go ahead and color in your strawberry. And this, this is just a little organizer to help us understand how all of the information we're about to learn relates. So we're going to start with living organisms like strawberries or humans or fruit flies. Everything that is alive, living things are made of tissues. And a tissue is represented by this picture. And this includes humans, our skin, our blood, our bones, our hearts, all of those are made of tissues. And then if we go smaller, our tissues are made of, tissues are made of cells. So if you zoom in on any one of these uh, cells that we see in this diagram and we get a closer look, in a plant, it's gonna look something like this. In us, the cells would look a little bit different, um, but they have a lot of the same structures, including the one that we're going to talk about next. We're talking about plant cells and because they are eukaryotic, good nucleus or true nucleus, inside of each of the strawberry cells there is a nucleus. Inside of the nucleus are the chromosomes and they're often represented as little X's. So in a human, most humans have 46 chromosomes. In a strawberry they actually tend to have 56 chromosomes. Strawberries are awesome to extract DNA from. They have a ton of DNA inside of them. So that brings us full circle. The chromosomes are made of DNA, and that's what this unit is all about. We're going to be getting our DNA out of living things, and when you do that, I need you to think through these steps of breaking it down into the tissues, getting the cells apart, getting the nucleus out, breaking open the nucleus to get the chromosomes, and finally we have the DNA. It's just in little packages called chromosomes. Next, you can color in the words DNA extraction. Extraction just means to get something out. So we're going to be extracting DNA from strawberries, and those of you who choose to eventually will extract your own DNA. This is such an important part of biotechnology. It's used by DNA analysts, geneticists. It's used in all sorts of aspects of biotechnology, from analyzing foods to solving crimes to looking for diseases. There are three basic steps to analyzing DNA from strawberries, so I'm going to start by numbering my steps. The first step of the lab is just going to be add soap. So we're going to take a strawberry, put it in a bag, add a little bit of water, and we're just going to add one drop of soap to the tissue. You can add something fancy called DNA extraction buffer, but it's really basically soap. It's important to think about why you're doing each step. So in the case of the soap, it is lysing or breaking open the cells. You can think about this in terms of why we wash our hands. If our hands have bacteria cells on them and we wash them, we break open those cells and in doing so we kill them. You can also remember this um, by the word Lysol. Lysol comes from that word root lys, which means to break and breaking cells kill cells. So we're gonna take it back up here. We will be breaking apart the tissues by just smashing up the strawberry um, and then breaking open the cells to let the nucleus out and breaking that nucleus open to let the chromosomes out. And all of this is going to be happening through the smashing of the strawberry and the addition of the soap. The next step will be to pour the mixture through a strainer or cheesecloth or um, or something like a coffee filter, and it's going to collect all of the solids in the strainer and let the liquid go through. 
the purpose of this step is we're gonna get those solids out. Everything that gets caught in the filter is gonna get thrown away. And in a little beaker, we're gonna capture our soapy DNA mix. So it'll be red, it'll be a little soapy, and somewhere in there is that DNA that we want. The next thing that you'll do is you'll pour the soapy DNA red solution into a test tube, fill it about halfway full, and then you're going to very carefully add a layer of isopropyl alcohol to the top of that, ice cold isopropyl alcohol. The purpose of this final step is to precipitate or pull out the DNA. So when you do this, when you look closely at your tube, you should see the DNA, it's gonna be a white stringy thing, should float up out of the soapy mix and the DNA should become suspended in the alcohol. And that's how you know that you've successfully completed the lab. Now that you've completed your notes, your final step is to put them on the front of your foldable. And you'll notice I added a couple things. I drew some DNA on the top of my foldable and I put the letters of DNA along the side of it. Consider whether you want to do that. And you are now done with your DNA extraction notes.